Dryness is a big issue that contact lens fitters must address on a daily basis. Whether looking at it from a health or comfort concern, if these issues aren't dealt with, it can literally make or break our fitting success. As we know, there are many options at our disposal. Technology has brought us to a place where we can offer all types of materials, solutions, and even medical options. But are these always the answer? When caring for our patients, our discussions don't always have to be around medical options or treatments. When dealing with concerns associated with dry eye disease, a discussion around environmental factors and lifestyle habits can be equally as effective. Let's look through a few concerns that we can address when educating our patients. Environmental concerns. Low humidity. Humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air. While there are certain geographical areas that have to contend with this more than others, time of year is also a factor. Remind your patients that air conditioners can reduce the humidity in the summer. Humidifiers can help address the dry indoor heat in the winter. Is your patient's home heated by a radiator? Encourage your patients to place a pan of water on top to add moisture to the dry air. Windy, dusty, and dry environments. Conditions such as these can vastly affect the ocular surface leading to dry eye. Your patients may find themselves in these conditions, but they can also be artificially created when using things like hair dryers, heaters, and fans. If possible, be sure to limit use of these products, and if that can't happen, limit the time that these objects blow directly into the eyes. Secondhand smoke. We can easily list multiple reasons why people shouldn't smoke. Adding dry eye disease to that list is just another. Non-smokers also have to be aware of this phenomenon as secondhand smoke can be equally damaging to the ocular surface. The idea here is that tobacco smoke contains thousands of substances, many of which are known irritants and inflammatory agents. These components have a direct relationship with ocular surface disease and dry eye. Lifestyle personal considerations. Makeup. While this may be a sensitive topic to a few, there are ways to use makeup and successfully manage dry eye symptoms. Encourage your patients to apply eye drops before applying makeup. They can consider using creams instead of powders. Also, discourage the use of waterproof mascara. Medications. What medications are your patients already taking? The list of medications that affect dryness is quite long. It includes things like antihistamines, antidepressants, antihypertensives, antidiuretics, anticholinergics. These drugs worsen dry eye because many of them decrease tear secretion. While it may not be possible to discontinue any of these systemic medications, if symptoms are severe, it may be worthwhile discussing alternative options with the patient's medical doctor. Diet. There is plenty of evidence to suggest that diets high in omega-3s can help with the treating of dry eye. The benefits seem to be more related to the associated conditions of blepharitis and malbomian gland dysfunction. Other diet concerns revolve around our understanding of free radicals and their influence on dry eye disease. A diet full of foods rich in antioxidants have been shown to help slow down this process. Encourage your patients to eat fruits and multicolored vegetables. Dark, leafy green plants such as kale and spinach are excellent. Caffeine. A study released not too long ago showed benefits, yes benefits of caffeine as related to dry eye disease. Apparently, this study demonstrated that caffeine can significantly increase the eye's ability to produce tears. While right now it would be an unconventional form of treatment for dry eye, it is possible that we could see this as a form of therapeutic treatment in the near future. Smoking. We spoke early about secondhand smoke. Obviously, if your patient is a smoker, they will be at an increased risk. 
If we are to continue our general health recommendations, we have to remind our patients about the risks of smoking. Increase fluid intake. Water makes up 60% of our body weight and is a vital part to every system in the body. It's only logical to see that if we are not replenishing the supply, it can have spillover effects as related to dry eye. The Institute of Medicine released a report with general recommendations for water intake, encouraging men to consume an average of 3.7 liters, which is about 125 ounces a day, and women 2.7 liters, which is 91 ounces a day. There's an awful lot of information here, but it's comforting to know that there are multiple non-medical ways of attacking symptoms of dryness. Whether addressing dryness with lens materials, solutions, medications, or as discussed today, lifestyle or environmental concerns, remember that an individualized approach is always best, as each patient may respond differently to different methods. Happy prescribing.